From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. And welcome to this Newsmakers Extra. We talked about this earlier. Dr. Adam Perdue is a professor and uh, an economist who really has done a lot of looking at what's going on within our community. What's the analysis? If you looked at what's going on in our community and the oil industry, how do you start to even do that analysis? What do you start? Well, first you want to start with numbers. Uh, and so while it was hard to really to, to foresee exactly how everything was going to work out at the beginning of 2015 with the fall in oil prices through 2014, uh, we do now have numbers uh, from the Texas Workforce Commission and from the Dallas Federal Reserve who had released their initial estimates for employment in 2015. Mm -hmm. and, and they show positive employment growth uh, between uh, 17 and 23,000 jobs in Houston. And, but see, we see headlines all the time about companies laying off mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of people. And so where does that imbalance come from? Well, I mean, we had been growing a lot faster. Right. Right. So from 2011 to 2014, we were adding approximately 100,000 jobs a year. Okay. And so that was probably unsustainable. And our trend rate of growth would normally be, if, if we hadn't had the fracking revolution or this downturn now, we would normally expect to be adding about 60 to 70,000 jobs see. a year. And so we're growing much, much slower because upstream oil and gas, which is uh, the rigs that are out there in the field actually getting the oil out of the ground, that, that, that is still a, prime, a major part of the Houston economy that drives the rest of the economy. And so as it's been shrinking, it's definitely going to slow our growth down. But we have lots of other things going on in Houston. Do the folks who are pulling it up out of the ground, do they at some point just stop doing it as much as they do because there's not much of a demand for it on the other end? Yeah, with, with, the, with the fall in oil prices, right, it now became economic, uneconomical to, to keep the rigs out there in the field. And so we, we had about 1,800 rigs in North, Carolina, uh, sorry, in North America uh, in 2014. Now we're closer to 700. And so that's why, where a lot of the job losses came from in upstream oil and gas over 2015. Is as you pull the rigs out, you need fewer roughnecks who are actually working on the rigs. Then you need fewer service providers who provide all the equipment and some of the extra work that's not directly drilling. And, and those are all based in Houston, too. And so that's why we have slowed down so much. What's the domino effect on all of this, though? When we're hearing people mm -hmm. being laid off, I know that my nonprofit organizations I'm a part of, they suffer because people don't have the same kind of disposable income, at least those mm -hmm. in the oil industry. What other kind of domino effects are going to be happening? Real estate, for example? Is that uh, well, uh, well, let's use your industry, for example. When you have what we, we call certain industries in, in, in a, a region, uh, the basic industries, and they're, they're really what drive the economy. And so here is oil and gas, but the three parts of oil and gas. Upstream, which is the rigs, uh, mid midstream, which is the boats and, and the pipelines and the transportation. Th they're having a little bit of problem right now. But then we also have downstream, which is the chemical plants and the petrochemical plants around the ship channel, um, on the ship channel and down by Freeport and Lake Jackson, and they're doing great right now. And then we have other uh, corporations in the Houston region who, who serve the rest of the nation and the rest of the world who are outside of oil and gas. And so these are our basic industries. And so if you, when you, just focusing on upstream, when we cut engineers and roughnecks uh, because we've cut the number of rigs, then those engineers and roughnecks are less likely to go buy a new truck, which then means that the dealership has less money to pay for advertising on any kind of news station, which then means the news station has less income to pay for everybody else. And so it trickles down through the whole economy. Mm -hmm. And so what, what has happened is we've had enough strength in the petrochemical complex and in other parts of the economy that serve the rest of the nation, which is growing pretty well right now, to balance out the losses in upstream. You know, I find it's, it's difficult for me not to be happy when I'm filling up my gas tank for a dollar forty and a gallon. I mean, I got to be happy about that. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side of the coin, it's hurting other things. Can you see a bottom, um, uh, you know, in this whole process, this bottom, is there a bottom there <laughs> that we can start seeing the bounce back up? Is there any way to analyze that or not? Uh, well, it, it, it's extremely difficult. And uh, really what we've found is the best way is to just look at the futures market. It actually, the futures market is very bad at predicting what the price of oil is going to be, but it's better than everything else. Uh, because it takes on anybody who, wh what everybody thinks is collected in 
the current futures market. And so it's very hard to call the bottom, but what I can tell you is what we'll have to see before we start seeing oil prices start going back up. And what is that? And so right now, uh, estimates for, the, for worldwide pr uh, supply are approximately one to two million barrels per day in excess of worldwide demand. And so what we'll have to see uh, before we can even think about um, prices starting to go back up significantly, enough to get rigs back out in the field, is that either that supply to fall and reach demand or demand to increase and reach supply. Or it's gonna be a combination of the two. And so the IEA, uh, the International uh, Energy Association, or agency, sorry, uh, predict, says that we have about one million barrels per day in excess of uh, supply, um, and that global growth uh, w in demand will be about one million barrels for this year. Mm -hmm. And so then if they're correct, then we should be seeing a balance at the end of the year. And so then we'll see, then is when we'll really start to see oil prices stabilize, if that happens. This, and then the other problem is, is we have much more petroleum in storage than we typically do, approximately 150 million barrels per day. So we got another year of this for, for sure. <laughs> Most likely, okay. uh, unless, uh, unless there's something else that we can't foresee happen. Well, I've been taking really good notes, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I get a chance to watch the, the playback of this as a lot of people hopefully will share it as well. Dr. Perdue, thank you mm -hmm. so much for coming. You've enlightened us quite a bit about what's going on, perspective about the oil and how it affects this community. For more information, click to Houston.com under the news banner. Click on Newsmakers.